So we've now got Nathan, Josh, and Page. Thank you so much. We're going to talk about the word Head Start in Blackpool. Yeah, please. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Nathan, and I'm the Youth Engagement Lead for Head Start in Blackpool. Um, do you want to so, yourself? I'm Josh, I'm the Apprentice Youth Engagement Worker. I'm Paige, and I am the Admin Apprentice for Boyle. Okay, so that would make a little bit more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Before I start, I have to apologise, I've got a little bit of a cold coming on, so I sound a bit croaky, a bit nasal, that's why, so just bear with me a little bit. And this is different to our usual audience of 10 to 16 year olds, so <laughs> just bear with us a second. Um, so, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about co production in schools, um, I'll give you a little bit of background first on, uh, on where we're coming from. Um, so, Head Start, it's a lottery funded um, initiative, um, and it's based over five years. And it's looking at building resilience in 10 to 16 year olds um, to prevent future mental ill health. Um, Blackpool was part of a pilot period um, along with a lot of other areas across the country, which was uh, phase two test and learn. At the end of this, we had to put a bid together and, and bid for um, a, a, a part of money that would fund us for the five years. We were successful in that. And that led us to phase three, which is August 2016, roll out the whole programme. So um, Head Start isn't a service that people refer into, as, um, as usually is the case when pots of money come along um, with, with a particular set of outcomes that need to be reached. Um, Head Start's a programme that's looking at changing a lot of the systems that are embedded in the whole town. It's a very ambitious programme. It's working in schools, it's working in the community, it's working in the digital world, it's working in homes as well. Um, we have a set of fundamentals, one of them being a brave and uh, innovative approach, um, another one being a, a common language and a common approach, which leads me to this, which you'll see on your desks. Now, I'm not going to talk to you too much about this because there's been books written about it, there's websites about it, there's training about it, and I'm not here to talk to you about that. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview about the concept behind this framework. So this is this is the the theory, this is the framework that underpins everything that we're doing in Blackpool around resilience. It's a resilience framework produced by Angie Hart and colleagues at Point Point Brighton. The website's on the bottom there if you want to um, visit and learn a little bit more about it. But basically, you'll see five columns, and you'll see boxes within those columns. Each one of those boxes is resilient move. The idea being that the more resilient moves that you have going on in your life, the more resilient you'll be. Okay, and that's as far as I'm going to go into it. Okay, it'll be clear why I brought that up in a little while because we're going to start a little look at it with the people you sat with. Um, one common language, one common approach. That's one of our fundamentals. Asset based, focused on strengths, focused, focused on things that are going well for families, for parents, for children, not focusing on the negatives. That's another one of our fundamentals. Finally, another one of our fundamentals is co-production. That's what I want to talk to you about today. So, it's, what is it? It's a bit of a buzzword. It's a bit of a buzzword at the moment. Um, it's sort of taking the place of participation. Everybody seems like talking about it. I can't stop saying it. It sounds like one of those strange words that you keep saying over and over again. It doesn't actually sound like a word anymore to me. Okay? <laughs> it's basically a collaboration between professionals and service users or stakeholders. Okay? In our case, it would be young people, or pupils or students. Okay, it's actually young, for us. It's young people having their views heard. It's their right. I don't need to preach to you guys about that. Um, if you want to know any more, check out the UN Rights of the Child, Article 12. Um, I have to like bang my drum in our team meetings and stuff. But yeah, it's their right at the end of the day. And um, it, it's not just about young people having a say. Co-production. It's not just them saying, uh, "Oh, we want blue chairs. We don't want red chairs." And then I'll say, okay, we'll get you blue chairs. Well, hey, we've done co-production, brilliant, thanks very much, guys, off you go. It's about young people having the opportunity, opportunity to actually co-design, co-produce co and co-deliver. So actually, not just saying what they want and expecting us to do something about it, it's saying what they want and then giving them the opportunities to do something about it themselves. It's about young people having a genuine influence. It's a bit of a sticky position. Um, for those who are a little bit apprehensive about young people being equal partners in a co-production process, um, it's not a case of us giving young people uh, the reins and saying off you go, run the school or run the organisation. You know, we probably wouldn't put a young person in charge of a headship 
although I don't want you to, Matt, I think that would be interesting for a day. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be quite fearful of if you're not too sure about, you know, um, what, what, what's going to happen if you, if you give young people this power, okay? But it's, it's about them having a genuine influence. It's not about saying whatever they say goes, it's about having a genuine influence. It's about having a negotiation. It's about meeting in the middle. I mean, your pupils are your best assets. Nobody knows about being a pupil at your school better than your pupils at your school. So why not use them to your advantage? What's it not? I feel like I spend a lot of my time talking about this, so I'm going to skip over it quite quickly. <coughs> it's not a tick box exercise. It's not parachuting young people in and going, look how good we are, we've got young people in the room, what do you want? Okay, well, we'll see what we can do, and then not do anything about it anyway. It's actually counterproductive. We've had feedback from young people who felt deflated, they've actually felt used in the past by people who come with the presence of you know, participation and actually nothing's ended up happening. And that can be quite deflating for a young person. Uh, particularly one who may be vulnerable, who might have issues themselves. It's not a one-off event or activity. So it's not just a case of sitting a group down and saying, let's just look at this one tiny piece of co-production or participation and then skipping over it and going back to exactly what you were doing before. Okay? And as I've said, it's not young people's demands. Uh, and it's not one person's job. Um, it's, not, it's not relying on that one person in a school. To just then just expect them to do things like a, a big initiative like co-production. Okay, so so why do we do it? So this is why we do it. Um, I'll give you an idea why we do it, and if you like the sound of it, you might want to crack on and do it yourselves. Um, to affect genuine change across the whole system, we spoke about whole school approach. Um, if young people are involved in that process, the chances are that that move towards change may well be more effective. Um, there's research done in 2003 by Kirby and colleagues who um, discovered that organisations that really embraced whole systems change and co-production um, were more successful at it than those who didn't look at it from a whole systems point of view. Um, we do it to inform our work. As I've said, nobody knows your school better than your pupils. If we know what they want, the chances are that um, we're going to be more relevant with our work, with our initiatives, with our direction of, of our support. To increase empowerment in the student body, so many things are done for young people nowadays. Maybe it's time, uh, time we gave them a chance to actually do some things for themselves. That sense of empowerment is quite powerful. It won't just necessarily be the people that are involved in the actual process of co-production. It's a ripple effect. And that, how far that reach, you know, it, it could go across the whole school, it could just go across the whole form, what the potential is there. Uh, and finally, and the big one for me, the big one, is individual young person development opportunities. It's about a young person being involved in that process and the development that they're going to experience by being involved in co-production. Um, Josh is going to tell you a little bit about his experience in a set. Um, but that's really powerful, and that's the key thing that I'm trying to implement within our programme at the moment. That is, um, why do you want young people involved? Think about why do you want young people involved? What role are they going to play in whatever opportunities it is that we're creating? What are they going to get out of it? Yeah, and that's the big one. What are they going to get out of it? Is it skills? Is it experience? Is it knowledge? Is it increased confidence? Is it, um, you know, increased self-worth? It could be... A, you know, the possibilities are endless. Um, but I'll just hand over to Josh for a minute, he's just going to give you a little bit of background about where he's from. Okay, so I am Josh Thompson, I'm currently from the program I started to say it earlier, um, and I'm 17 years old. But I wasn't always um, a member of staff for Head Start. About nine weeks ago, just before I actually got my post as an apprentice, I was part of Head Start's Young Practice Executive Group, which is their steering group. Um, comprised of young people to help co-produce the whole set, uh, program. Um, for me personally, I've gained quite a lot from it. So I became at one point chair of the meeting itself. Um, I've been to interviews, I've been on training, I've co-delivered some training. And some of the things that this has done for me is it, the less endless, but also for a bit of humor. Um, so one of them is confidence, so 
I never ever would have stood uh, stood in front of as many people as there are today in a room three years ago before I started.